In this video, we're going to see how to create project files for use in Autodesk Inventor. Here at the zero load point, we're going to click on our projects command from our launch panel of the getting started tab. Here you will see we have a few project files you might have already stored in your system. We have one that we were provided with with our working files directory. And what we're going to do is create just another one that resides in that same directory. So it's a little redundant, I understand, but we're just doing this to make sure we understand how to create one. So at the bottom of the screen here, we're going to click on New to start a new project file. We can specify one of two different types. Now we can specify a single user project type or a vault project. Now a vault project utilizes the data management system that comes with Autodesk Inventor called Vault. It is a check-in and check-out program that allows you to track data to also control versioning and also life cycles if you go to a higher version of the Autodesk Vault software. For now, we are just going to be focused on a single user project. So we'll click Next. And we have to specify what project name we would like to give it. Here I'll just call it something very simple. Inf Skills 2. So we want to have our workspace be somewhere that is at the root of our design directory. All of our folders, all of our IAMs, all of our IPTs, all of our drawings, they all fall underneath this folder structure. We want to put this to be the root of that folder structure. So since we're working on our working files, why not put it there? Next. And we can specify what libraries to add if we would like to have a predefined inventor library. We don't have any, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, so let's click Finish. That will create our Infinite Skills 2 project with the same workspace location that we are currently using for our supplied project file. Now let's talk about some of the settings down below for our project file. This is a single user. We see that shown right here under Type. We have the location of where it's stored. We also have the ability to see if it is a read or read-write style library. This is currently read-only. That is actually a default setting. Every time you create a project file, your style library will be set to read-only. We also can see our appearance libraries, material libraries we have in use, as well as the workspace, workgroup search paths, libraries, and frequently used subfolders. So let's take a moment to talk about a few of these. We'll start with libraries. Now a library to a project file is really nothing different than a folder that you specify here in the project file to say everything that's in there should be read-only. It should be stuff that I cannot modify, but I still want to utilize it. So it still retains itself inside of our workspace. We can find the files we want to place into an assembly, but we just can't modify the data. We can't change the extrusions, we can't change sketches, we can't change part numbers. It is what it is. Now, if you want to modify a library, you should have a project set up called Library Administration, where that folder is set to not be a library specified directory. Now, the next one down, frequently used subfolders, is just like a little shortcut. It's faster ways to get places. So, anytime you want to add a library or perhaps a frequently used subfolder, you can click on it right click and say add path, add path from file or from a directory. Here I'll just say add path. It's right now my working files directory and I know I have a couple chapters in there. Maybe I'll do chapter one and the name for that will be perhaps ch1. I'll do another one by right clicking and saying add path. This one will be ch2 and that goes to another folder I have right there. Make sure you get the spelling right, otherwise you should use the Browse button to go find it. And we'll see what that does for us in just a moment. If I scroll down, I can also see Folder Options, which will list where our design data, templates, and standard Content Center files reside. Our design data is our styles and standards. It's our thread spreadsheets. It's all of our items that make up some of the intelligence of our different files. We then have our template location, so we can specify where our templates should be stored. And we also have that last one there for Content Center Files Default. Now that's set up for whenever I place, let's say, a quarter 20 bolt 
and it's exactly how it should be placed from our recipe in the content center, then it goes to that directory, which is actually outside of our workspace in almost every case. Now, if we place in a custom content center piece, we're actually able to specify where that file goes as we're creating it. So that's the difference between a standard content center piece and a custom content center piece. It's basically where the file goes. Now, further down, we have options. Here we can specify how many old versions to keep. We can also see the name and shortcut for our project file again, and a few more settings that we'll cover in different areas of this course. So I'm going to click Save here first. Yes to this migration window. That's OK. Hit the Done button. Now when I do an open screen, I'll see on the left-hand side my frequently used subfolders. If I did have a library, that would show up here as well between the Audust 360 and frequently used subfolders. And I also have my content center files here as well. So I can see exactly where my standard content center files go. Now if I get lost in my directory, like, oh, I'm down in chapter 6 now, if I click on chapter 1, it'll take me right back to where I need to go. Or if I get lost somewhere else, maybe on my desktop, or may I have to browse to go find something on a network server somewhere, and now that I've come back, I want to know exactly where I was, where my cone of influence was. If I click on Workspace, it'll just take me right back to the root of where all my files should be. Now, the only time you can change project files is when you're at a zero load point, like I currently am. There's no other files open. There's no parts, assemblies, or drawings open. I can come down here and easily just change my project file again, or click on Projects to go back to the window and change it. Now, as you can see, one of my project files disappeared, and that's just because I had it stored in a different location. So what I'm going to do here is change back to default. I'm going to delete my Infinite Skills 2 here that I created, and then just re-browse to find the actual file that I want there. There we go. There's my controlling project file. It should also be in your working files directory as well if you would like to use this one or create your own. So this has been a look at working with project files inside of Autodesk Inventor.